Hey, again, when our Wednesday Bible study program, I'm excited about today. Our topic today is going to be COVID-19, um, about the sermon. It's a blessing uh, to be here in the house of God always. And I'm uh, missing you, congregation. Can't wait till we get back together again. And uh, we welcome you in visitors. If you never heard me before, I pray that the word be a blessing to you, uh, to the word of God. I come do my job. God calls to be ministers. And that's why I'm here today, to share the word of God with you. Today, we're going to be coming out of Matthew, the fourth chapter, in the fourth verse. And it reads, in the fourth, fourth verse, Matthew, the fourth chapter, fourth verse. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Let's bow heads and pray. Father God, we thank you. We praise you for this word. We thank you for this word today, God. We collectively come together to, to study your word of God. Lord, now, Father God, let it not turn to your void, but God, let us receive this word and believe it, God, and our life begin to change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So uh, today, we're coming out of Matthew the uh, fourth chapter. This is when Jesus was led in the wilderness and he was being tempted by Satan in the wilderness. He was being tempted. Satan come to him and told him to turn his bread into stone and, and Jesus began to tell him, you know, man can't live by bread alone, but every word is seed out of the mouth of God. You know, and I, I think that's, that's real good, you know. I thank God for all the food programs we got. I thank you for y'all getting a stimulus check, getting the money. Government is taking care of you for the money. And uh, and a lot of food banks and everybody feeding people with being fed. But what about the word of God? What about the word of God? That's my job. My job is to do my job. Everybody do their job. My job is come today and give you a word. So because you just cannot live by bread alone. You know, we have to to uh, live off the word of God. And so we just thank God for that teaching us today and showing us how Satan come to tempt him and beginning to try to change his direction when he was going in the wilderness fasting, when he was getting ready to start his ministry. And who knows that Satan always want to control God's ministry and stop them and fool them and get the eyes on certain things and everything else. But you know what? Yeah, we need food for the physical body, but we need it for the spiritual body. Without that, we have nothing. So today, I just want to show you some of the things about Jesus is the antidote. Jesus, he he got it already. Like now they're trying to get the medicine. The whole thing is to get the antidote to this virus. They ever get it, they can conquer it. You know, it's not gonna go away, but they can have a way they can save life that people don't have to die by it. This is a very serious thing out here. This is a very serious thing. You know, follow the rules, wash your hands, you go out, wear your mask, your gloves. I'm a firm believer in this from day one. I remember going in stores and seeing a lot of our young people and, and getting to see them working in stores. Say, you don't got no masks or nothing on? They said, they, you know, like it wasn't going to bother them. And so now I'm hearing now that they was told that, oh, it can't bother them. Now more dying than ever. So today I'm just coming today to share with you the word of God. We need the word of God. We need the truth. We need to know what's going on. We need our Lord and Savior you ever have because bad information get people destroyed. So, uh, good information bring on transformation. So, I want to get more into the Word of God. I want to show you about David. Can I go to, and speak about David in Psalm 51? In Psalm 51, David was saying to God, he said this, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, and according to the multitude of thy tender mercy, while my transgression, wash me, Doubt my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin. And he says, For I acknowledge my transgression and my sins, and my sin is ever before me. So he said, I acknowledge my sins, and sins are ever before me. David is going to go on in this Psalms here. He's going to go on and, and begin to say, He was shaped and fashioned in his mother's womb. Now, if I use COVID 19 in this message and show you how sin operates, See, sin didn't start with David. Sin was started way, way, way from his forefathers on. His great, great, great grandmother, Rahab the Harlot. And his go on, and David was born out of wedlock. You know, David was, was, was the embarrassment of his father's family. So sin didn't start 
get with David, but David is saying, listen, God, if you'll cleanse me, if you'll cleanse me of my iniquities, if you'll wash it away from me. You know, David wanted a pure heart here. David want to be changed. And so that's the way I heard the other day when a newscaster, he was in Beijing, the time this stuff was start happening, and he had only seconds in the middle of the night to get out. And they were trying to take pictures while the COVID-19, with his animal market, where the say was started from, but they told him he had to get out. They couldn't do it. So they were passing by, they taking pictures. So now they was talking about last night that they got a chance to go back. And when they went back and said it was there, and they were on the train, and one of the uh, Chinese women and her daughter didn't want to be about beside him because he's American. They said, can we get another car? Then that's funny to me. It really have started from, from there. But now because we here in America got this, got this so bad and out of control, they didn't want America beside them. Wow, that's awesome, right? That's why sin is. Sin, somebody will convict you and see you in sin. And it didn't start from you. It started way somewhere else. And so what David was saying, look, I was born in sin and iniquities. He said, Lord, created me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. See, people always forget where it starts from. They think it starts with you. And it just might have come from them. And they point the finger at you. But thank be to God. To Jesus Christ said, man cannot live by bread alone, but every word will see out of mouth of God. He go David. David said, I was born in iniquity. I was born in sin. He began to tell and ask him Jesus to, to, uh, to, to, to cleanse me. And he said again in verse 4, he said, And against thee have I only have I sinned, have done this evil in thy sight, that thou may be justified when thou speak, and clear when thou judge. He said, Behold, I was shaped in iniquities, in sin did my mother conceive me. In other words, he says, when my mother conceived me, she conceived me in sin. David followed Jesse, was not married to her. He conceived her in sin. David said, listen, I know a lot of people who are, he end up uh, uh, killing Mariah, uh, his wife, he taking his wife. And David said, I was born into this stuff. It didn't happen with me. You know, they, they say America wasn't ready for this epidemic coming. They were nowhere prepared for it. It just came. But where it come from, they know where it come from. They begin to work and change and put on masks and clean. We will see them over there in China wearing masks. Like, look at the people wearing masks. We thought it was like, okay, they wearing masks, you know? But then, no, we like to end up wearing masks because what happened there came here. Now, we got it more than them. And now, uh, if you're American, go there. They look at you like, we don't want to be around you. But it come from you. And so that's the way sin is. Sin is, 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 is it, it didn't have to start with you. It started somewhere else. But yet because you got it and you're not ready for it, the academic not ready for it, that you would have it. Look at David. David was a recipient of sin. Come from his forefathers. Come that he wasn't even prepared for it. They know where it come from, but David was not ready. Because if you're not ready for something, it just come up on you and you wake up in the middle of this here, you just need an antidote. Because you don't know, because you want not prepare. But if you cut your finger and see the bleeding, you, you quickly you're gonna get a band-aid or get it stitches. You're gonna wrap, you're gonna take care of it. But when some come from somewhere else and you don't know where it comes from, it just come in like an epidemic. It come in like this, this COVID-19 coming to America. We weren't ready for it. Because it didn't start with us. It just come up on us. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't do what it takes to make it happen. But it affected us. Sin is that way. You don't have to do what made it happen. It can come from all the way from Adam and Eve. It come from a place and it come up on us and we are not prepared. We've been looking at them people's so They don't go where we go. Look at them people. They don't get around that because they know. They've been affected. They know where it started from. And we think, oh yeah, we can do that. We ain't got to protect ourselves. We can hang out with them people. We can, we can, we can do this and that. Some people may can't handle drinking. Some people may just can't handle just just, just being out and around about things because it's the cost of a sin that it is a it is a COVID-19. It affects us, it destroys us because we are not prepared. Because it just comes out of nowhere. It just shows up. We don't know how, how to protect ourselves and stay away from it or protect our eyes or ears or, or, or not pay attention to that or not take a second look or, or not answer back. 
Sin is deadly. That's why I call this sermon COVID-19. But watch David. David began to say, purge me with something. He says, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be white as snow. He said, make me to hear and rejoice gladness, that the bone which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face for my sin. Block out all of my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew the right spirit in me. David said, Lord, you my antidote. You, you my vaccine. You don't think to save me. I want prepared for this life. I want prepared for what, what was in me. I want prepared that I wasn't able to keep myself. And I, I, I was going to be a woman now. That's what David was saying. He said, I, I, and they said, David was a very handsome looking man. He wasn't prepared for what he was given to work with. And so David was walking in a sin that he was after God very hard. But the things that was handed to him that he wasn't prepared for, he was acknowledging them to God. He said, God, help me. I have to be helped. You got to help me. I need you. Creating me a clean heart. Renewing me a right spirit. Funny how people quick to point fingers. But a lot of times, they be the ones that started it. Just like that newscaster, he goes back. Then they don't want to be around him because he's American. Well, look, it comes from you. And now in America, people call we got it. We got caught off God because of y'all. You didn't have it. And so that, that's what sin is. From Adam and Eve. We, we got caught off guard. We, we, David said, I was born in it. I love this message because it shows how the sin can go from generation to generation. The sin we do today, our grandchildren, our children will be affected by it because they caught off of God about it. You know what our addiction or what the sin is, but they don't know. And then it wakes up into this world and then they got this deal. Then they're going to need an antidote. They're going to need Jesus. And that's why we got to say you need Jesus because you don't know what you're dealing with. You don't know your forefathers. You don't know what you've been through. You need Jesus. Praise the Lord. So watch this here. Watch this here. He says in verse 11, he said, Cast me not away from that prayer, and take, and, and take not the Holy Spirit from me, but restore unto me the joy and the salvation. Uphail me with thy free, with thy free, with a free spirit. He said, Then will I teach the transgression that ways, and the sinner shall be be converted unto thee. David said, when you teach me, I'm going to teach them. Because this thing came up on me like COVID-19. I didn't know. I love you, God. But this thing that come from my forefathers, like I said, his, his, his great-great-grandmother, uh, uh, Rahab the Harlot, and, but, but she got converted. And, and then it come down to Jesse. And, and then to, to, to marry to him, David, and so that's why God said, God's throne will last forever. In other words, he's saying, COVID-19, sin will not take you out. Because here go David, showing a perfect, his life is not perfect. Some people I heard, they say, we never seen mama and dad, dad ever fuck. Well, praise the Lord then. I mean, you know, from Adam and Eve sin. Sin is always in the campground somewhere. It's like, it's sneaky. Like now, we got to be careful, wash our hands, put on gloves. We have to protect ourselves because the germ is very sneaky and once it get on you, it can be very deadly without an antidote. Thank God for Jesus, being our Jesus. That's why sin is so sneaky because it can be anywhere, any place. And when you drop your guard, it can get you at any time, anybody. So you just cannot point somebody out and say they're a bad person. The same thing happens to somebody else can happen to you because it is a terrible thing. Have you noticed now people got to wear masks and gloves? Well, that's the way sin is. People, you have to protect ourselves from sin because sin is something that the people who create it know what it is. We think it may be all right for us to go there. We may think it's all right to talk to that person. We think it may be all right to drink a beer or two. We may think it's all right to go and cut somebody out, whatever you want to do. We may think it's all right to do whatever. No, it's not. We have to protect ourselves. We got to watch ourselves because what it do is open up a door of iniquity. It opened up a place that to get our grandchildren, their children, their children, and they don't even know what's coming from. But it will come from a place. Funny how people want to point fingers and they trained you how to see it, showed you how to do it. Oh, yeah, because it always dribbled down. And so the antidote is Jesus. 
So, so David said, look, he said, God, create me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. He said, wash me clean. Hide your face, my iniquity. Don't move me away from your presence. David, he known he dealing with something that will kill him. He known that Jesus Christ is his respirator. Jesus Christ is his breath. Jesus Christ is his spirit. Jesus Christ is his strength. Jesus Christ is his healer. Jesus Christ is his salvation. And Jesus Christ is his king, his Lord. He knows that you say, do not take it away from me. Now let's go back to Matthew and close. Matthew, the fourth chapter. In, uh, the fourth. This is awesome. It's awesome because it's something we need to know because it's a generation curse thing. And it's the same way COVID-19 is. It comes from somewhere else. And now we got it more than anywhere. Now they're looking at us like we crazy around here. So the newscaster, when he went back, he says, I'm on the train. She asked the conductor, could me and my daughter move? My God. It comes from there. And the travel all the way to record. We got it bad. Now we are the bad people. Wow. That's what he's saying here. People always can be talking about you behind your back. Hey, we watch them sin. Hey, man, if I train us out of sin. It didn't start with David. David said, I was born into it. But David said, create me a clean heart and renew the right spirit in me. See, some people think it's okay to do what they do. They don't know that's a domino effect that Satan is using them. But let me tell you somebody that Satan could not use. And I'm going to show you this tonight in my closing. It's Matthew, the fourth chapter. We're going to start in verse 1 this time. Say, and when Jesus was, was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil, when he had fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, and after he was hungry, and when the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made into bread. But he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out of the mouth of God. Hey, it's good. I thank God for the food pantry. I thank God for uh, everything we got going on. But let me tell you something. Let's not get our eyes off on that. Let's get our eyes off. My job is to get your eyes on the word of God. I'm not here to buy you. I'm not here to fleece you. I'm not here to put your mind on flesh. I'm here. My job is one thing is to keep your mind on Christ because he's the only thing that can save you. And Jesus begin to tell him, I'm not going to put my mind on no bread right now. You're not going to buy me out, Satan, right now. You watch Satan. Satan has been to try to buy him out with the worldly thing. But I thank God for this because the antidote, he is the antidote because Satan couldn't buy him. Satan couldn't trick him. That's how sin come in. Satan get our eyes off of everything else. The church we supposed to be built on the word of God. That's when he lied. I love when he lied. He was in the wilderness and Jezebel. And she had all her, her, her 400 prophets. They was living good in time of famine. And, and Elijah, God said, go to Mount Carmel. It's a Mount Carmel time. Tell them to build an altar. You build an altar. The see they call on their God. Let's see who answered. Well, we know the story. God didn't answer. Elijah said, cut yourself like a fool you are. Maybe you God sleep. Maybe you're on vacation. Their money could not get an answer. And Elijah, he looked at heaven and blessed God and told him who he was. He dug a trench around and put eight barrels of water. And the Bible said God answered him by fire, consumed, sucked up the water around the trench, split the altar in, in half and answered him. And then Elijah said, get him. It's time for Mount Carmel. He killed 400 false prophets because they had money. They looked like they were living good. See, you cannot trick people in the season. People need a word of God. 2014, we got to understand that in 2017, God began to tell me about 2021. He said, Glenn, I've been speaking for years. The economy going to fail. The bottom of the economy is going to fail out. Watch out with climate change. Watch and see what God's going to do. God, people, what I've been praying, God, get me prepared. What do I need to do? I've been telling my people, they give you a stimulus check. And anybody can take all they can give you. But get prepared for 2021. Because the body is going to fall out the economy. Because you know what? We cannot put our eyes on what everybody doing on Facebook, the little bitty thing. No, I want people that want the word of God. You need to get your eyes on God. What do I need to do next? How do I protect my home? How do I protect my business? How do I protect my finances? What should I do? We, as men of God, 
we need to say some Mount Carmel time. And the Bible says, after Elijah killed them four, 400 false prophets, God told him, because there had been a drought, hadn't rained in three years. He said, he said, tell him it's been raining again. He said, look at the clouds in the hand. He put your ear to the ground, heard thunder. And God had Elijah speaking again out of his mouth that rain was coming. Why? Because false prophets were living good, tempting with their money. Jezebel was controlling people. But the word of God had the last say so. The last say so. So today I'm going to come and show you the antidote of Jesus. Watch Satan trying to tempt him. But God would not be tempted. He says in verse 4, Then the devil taking him up into a holy city and set him up on a pinnacle of the temple. And he said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, that he should give the angels charge and concern of thee, and that in thy hand, if any bear thee up, or lest that at any time thou should dash thy foot against the stone. And Jesus said unto him, It is written again, that thou should not tempt the Lord thy God. He said again, it is written. He stayed on the word of God every time when the devil tried to bring him. COVID-19, which is sin, Jesus was the antidote. He said, it is written in the word of God. Thou should not tempt God. Like he told him, man should not live by bread alone. Everything that the sin tried to tempt him, Jesus was finna be our antidote. Glory be to God. Watch this here. Watch this here. And again, the devil taking him up into a, an exceeding high mountain and showed him all the kingdom of the world and, and, and the glory of them. And said unto him, all these things I will give to thee if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then said Jesus unto him, get thee hence, Satan, for it is written that thou shalt not worship, that thou shalt worship the Lord thy God. And him only shall I serve. Jesus is the antidote to sin. He's the antidote to the, to the COVID-19. He is, is the reason why we say we have to receive Jesus Christ. Why? Because he has beaten sin. He has defeated Satan. He has destroyed him. When he come and tempt him at his weakest point, he begin to stand on the word of God. That's why man cannot live by bread alone. It's good people to give you that. It's good people to give you money. But what about the word of God? You cannot live by that. Satan come to buy you out, to sell you out, to keep you ignorant for whatever God doing and how he's doing it. But our job as ministers is to come and give you the word of God. Glory be to God. Watch this here. Watch. Verse 11. Then the devil leave him. And behold, the angels came and ministered unto him. And so, when he got to tempting him, Jesus defeated him. So that's why David was saying in, in, in Psalm 51, create me a clean heart. You're the antidote. You can save me. See, Jesus is our antidote. See, right now they're trying to come over with an antidote with this. Not saying that this won't ever go away. When some come on the earth, it don't never age. Them things, flu. We take shots every year. It don't go away. It stays here. When some shows up, it never go away. We just get an antidote. Well, we can be protected from it. We will be protected from it because when you get an antidote, and that's what they're working on. For Jesus is our antidote. When Satan was tempting with the things, the money, food, and on the power of the world, he said, get behind me. He said, it is written. Thou not, not worship but God thou only. So when people come and put your mind on things, that's okay. Let them do that. You need it. But you better get some Jesus Christ in you. Because David says, listen here. He said, I was, I was born in iniquity. I was shaped in my mother's womb. He said it. He said, he said, Lord, create me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. He said it. He said, when I learn, I teach other people. See, sin we do today will affect our children tomorrow. I'm going to say it again. Sin we do today will affect our children tomorrow. And a lot of times, it don't start with you. It started with Adam and Eve. It's passed on like a baton. Every time you finna get up and grow and start running. I used to run track. And when we were running, we, we would, uh, you know, uh, ran, we'll pass the baton. And, and, when you, and when you do that, you pass it to somebody else. That's the way it is. Every generation get, get, get the pass a baton of sin. And they begin to run with it. And they don't know what they're running with. And it's something will kill them. That's why we have to tell people, you need Jesus. He's your antidote. 
You need Jesus. You need that protection. You need that covering. You know, we see it now. We have to wash our hands and cannot touch the basket at the stores and wear masks and can't be closed in. We can't even have church today because of that. That's the way sin is. When you do get back around the people, you need Jesus. He's your antidote. David said, Lord, create me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit in me. That's what he said. Because Jesus had defeated Satan. When he got on that cross, and the last thing Jesus said he would do, he put death on his feet. When Jesus Christ, Christ got on that cross, and he died for our sin and rose again, and then come back, and then giving us and sent the right hand of the Father and sent back his Holy Spirit to us, the Bible said we must be born again. The Bible says in Isaiah, he, he make it plainly to us in 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter, in the 17th verse. He said, God, from any man being Christ, he's a new creature. Our old things have passed away and all things come to be new. That's what he says because that's the antidote. Then he says it in, in Ephesians 3 and 20. He said, now unto him is able to do more. See the bond of both all we can ask and think of according to the power of working us. Out through the ages, all ages of the church. See, Jesus Christ is our antidote. John chapter 15, he's having the true body. So you bind me, I'm binding you. We'll bring forth fruit, our fruit we decide, and it will remain. See, that's what he says in Romans 10 and verse 9. That's if, if you confess with your mouth and believe he's the Son of God. You know, he said you say. See, Jesus Christ is our antidote. Jesus Christ is our antidote. See, sin is like COVID-19. It's deadly and it's poison and it's everywhere. Sneaky. How did it travel from another country here? And we got it to worse here. And then you go back there and they will look at American people like, we don't want to be involved with y'all. We hear y'all got it bad. Where it come from you? But that's what sin is. People want to point fingers at you. It didn't start with you. It just hit you. You don't know what you're dealing with. But somebody, I can tell you somebody that you do know what you're dealing with. That's our Lord and the Savior, Jesus Christ. That's why God said he prepared a body. Animals can do it. He prepared a body. Jesus Christ, I will say it. And when we see Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, he's our antidote. Don't beat yourself up. Because why, why, why me? Why my family? Why this? It just started with y'all. It's been handed to you. You don't know what you're dealing with. But Jesus Christ do. He didn't deal with it. And the fact they kicked him out. Michael and kicked him out of heaven and kicked him to the earth. Then Jesus came here because he knew he was here. See, sin comes from somewhere else that's here. But Jesus said, I'm the antidote. I got you. I got you. I never leave you, I never forsake you. I have you. Today, I want to ask you, do you know Jesus Christ by the point of your sin? If you don't, we receive him. Will you do the Roman 10 and 9, confess him that he is the Son of God and receive him in your life? If you do that, then he come in your life, you are saved. And then from there, you just chase after him. Get, get you a good Bible, get in it, get around a Bible group, study the Word of God, pray to him, call on him. He'll open his Bible up for you. He'll start building so many things to you, and you'll be realizing, wow, people is not protecting themselves. See, when they didn't believe, it would harm them. They say the young people was told that it wouldn't hurt them, but they're going on beaches doing whatever they want to. I heard this morning, look, baby, five-year-old caught it, and uh, she died. That broke my heart. I think of my grandkids. See, bad information will destroy you. But good information will save you. And I'm going to tell you, this is something that we don't, you think you don't need him. I don't need Christ. I don't need this. Yeah, you need him. That's bad information. I come today to give you good information. I didn't come today to give you money. I didn't come today to give you food. I come today to give you something that will get you all that and then some. That's why I preach uh, 1 Timothy, the 4th chapter, in the 7th, 8th verse, exercise the word of God. You need to promise now and the promise to come. The word of God, we need it. And we need to know what it is. And it will protect you, it will watch over you, and it will provide for you. I hate to tell you, sin is stored with you. They may even make you want to believe that it did. Sin did not store with you. Sin was handed to you like a baton in a race. It was handed to you. 
So how do you clean yourself of this? How do you do this? How do you get this out of you? Well, it will always be there with you. But it would not, like some people, they say, the immune system, it, it's there, but they, but they just, they transport it to somebody else but won't destroy them. When Jesus Christ comes in your life, you may have the sin, but Jesus Christ comes in your life where it won't destroy you. It won't kill you. And pray that you won't spread it. Jesus Christ comes and stops it right there in your immune system. He come there, he said, except you be born again. He told Nicodemus, he said, except you be born again, you will not see the kingdom of God. He said, you must be born again, not of flesh and blood, but of the spirit of God. Look, I love you. I pray that you enjoy this. This is a blessing to me. You always come to me before I go to you. And I receive the word of God because I have to minister to myself. When the word of God, God gave me this word, I minister to myself. I love you. Be safe, be careful until we see each other again. My name is Pastor Glenn Winston from Anointed Point of Discipleship. And I want to pray. I want to pray for all our healthcare workers. I want to pray for our doctors. I want to pray for everybody in the medical field all around this world. I want to pray for our nation. I want to pray for our economy because it's going to happen. I'm not, no gloom and doom. This is what God told me. It's going to fall out in 2007, in, in, in 2021. That's what God told me three years ago. I've been telling people a long time ago, get canned goods, get this, get that. Now you're talking about meat shortage. Meat is going to go up. Tell you something, you need to be praying to God, what should I do next? Not walk in fear, but instruction. That's all you need is instruction. The word of God. And you need, like the song says, we need a word. Take me to the king. And that's what I'm trying to do today, is get you a word. And take it to the king. So we want to pray for the doctors. We want to pray for the nurses. We want, we want to pray for everyone. We want to pray. Uh, even the prayers you, you're needing, we want to pray for. Uh, we want to pray. Matter of fact, I got a brother that's in New York. Uh, I want to pray for him in the hospital. I want to pray. We just want to pray. We just want to pray. This is hard time, troubling time. The only thing we got is Christ. And so we want to pray. Can we pray together? Just by here. Father God, we thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. God, and we just watch over everybody, over everybody, protect them. You are the antidote we need. God, we're praying for the scientists to come with antidote. God, we're praying for the doctors to give wisdom. God, we we praying to protect the nurses, everyone. God, I'm praying for anointed point discipleship. God, the members, watch over them, keep them. Now, God, only the members of anointed point, but everyone that listen around this world, God, we praying for them protection, God. Watch over them, God. We pray for the word today and realize sin is in store with them. It is like that COVID-19. It will pass from somewhere else, but God, you are the antidote. God, you are you, you our glove. You are our uh, 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 a face mask, God. You are our uh, uh, a hand sanitizer, God. You are our uh, uh, a protector, our provider. You more than them things for us, God. And we just thank you for giving us Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we ask you today, God, come in our life. Come in people like don't know you. And God, you keep them. You are the antidote. You defeated Satan. You denied everything he tried to give. But God, we thank you. Because you said that you so loved the world that you gave your only begotten Son, Lord, believe in, believe in Jesus Christ, and our parents will have everlasting life. And we thank you today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, brothers and sisters, until we meet again, we'll be having uh, our um, Fruit of the Spirit comes on at Friday at 5 o'clock. That's talking about the miracles that did happen in people's life. And then Sunday at 11 o'clock, hey, we'll be back on well, Sunday service. Gonna be a powerful word. Love you until we meet again. God bless you.